Hello, everybody. I'm just waiting for some more people to um, come on. I can see the numbers going up nicely. So we'll just keep letting the numbers go up for a little bit. Oh, you can. Uh, okay. Hope you all had a good day. A few questions coming through already, but we'll we'll deal with questions a little bit towards the end if that's okay. But keep firing your questions in, everybody. That'll be absolutely great. I'm just going to pop the screen on, and then you can. Um, So, hope you can see that all right. I'm just going to um, perfect. Okay, so we've nearly got 300 people coming on. So I'll just um, just give it a little bit longer, if that's okay. Perfect. Right. Okay, everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick off. And um, this evening, we are focusing on um, immunity, supporting our immune health, and focusing especially around nutrition and also hydration. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Louise Riley, and I am a soaring manager, but also an advisory board member. And I'm an advisory board member for Forever UK, Ireland and Iceland, and an advisory board member alongside the wonderful David Urch. And um, what we have been doing is been training for the company, um, and for me personally, for over 20 years, and as well as being a Forever business owner. What I really like to do is I enjoy sharing my knowledge with you um, to help you with your businesses, but also coming from the angle of being a forever business owner myself. I really think that does, does help. So um, let me just move to the first slide. As you can see, I'm here with um, the lovely Gina Ryan, who is based over in Ireland. And um, I'm going to talk about immune health and then I'm going to pass over to Gina later on and she's going to share some more information with you to do with the power of water and how wonderful water is for your health and well-being. Okay, so let's start off by understanding a little bit about nutrition. The gap in nutrition, so this is the difference between what we're actually getting from food and uh, what we actually need for optimal health. And I know a lot of people will, will say, well, surely if we're eating a healthy, well-balanced diet, we should be getting everything that we need. Unfortunately, we're all in a, a situation of, I suppose, um, having different choices in food, you know, it's depending on our lifestyle really. Um, but lots of people will go for processed food, ready-made meals that we get in supermarkets that are full of preservatives. This can mean that they have low levels of nutrients, um, fast foods, takeaways, and even when people are on fad diets and uh, believing that if they eat a certain kind of food or go on a certain kind of system for a period of time, they're going to be losing weight, but they're not actually considering uh, the nutrients that are lacking in what they're doing. Uh, the other thing is when we look at the nutrients that we are getting in food, and um, this can be down to the different food chains, the way that food these days, um, the soil that food is grown in especially, our fruits and vegetables, we, um, we have to consider that the crop rotations, lack of, lack of minerals that we're getting in the soil 
And in fact, there was a study that was done between 1978 and 1991 that said on average, looking at vegetables from the, from the, the ground, that there was 59% lacking in zinc from 1978 to 1991. And that report was actually came out in 2003. So that was quite a while ago. So we don't know what it is today. Okay, what about the health of our digestive system? And we've heard the saying, you are what you eat. But for one of the things that's really important to me, it's about what you absorb. And part of our digestive system is absorption. So we have to make sure that the mechanics of our digestive system, which is from the moment we start to think about food, the saliva in our mouth, to the time that it is actually absorbed in, into our body from the villi in our small intestine. So that whole process has to be working correctly. What about lifestyle choices as well? Um, this can be for people that maybe smoke, um, they drink, excessive exercise which might sound a bit strange but when we are exercising to a high level you are actually putting your body under stress and um, so it's also you know not overdoing things in certain certain ways stimulants and that's say the activity level as well so with activity levels it could be that you are doing too much or even not doing enough and then finally in that section it could be down to genetics it's the way that we are and maybe there's certain things that we cannot help this is interesting 49 percent of people aged 65 plus take a variety of medications every day in fact worryingly people can actually be taking around about five different kinds of medications every day so some of these, which you might not think are actually medications, but they are things that people will just take because they are, it becomes a bit of a habit or they're not addressing the challenge they have. So what about antiacids if you get a little bit of a heartburn? Um, antibiotics, statins, diuretics, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. These are just a few of the things that people are taking on a regular basis and it's the continuity of taking these kind of things that can also have an effect on our nutritional state so you can see on the screen there's a whole selection of different nutrients up there as well as other few things as well so we have um, b12 calcium coenzyme q10 folic acid iron magnesium melatonin uh, which is a hormone, omega-3, our probiotics as well, which are um, also classed as healthy bacteria, and then the minerals, selenium and zinc. So these have actually been shown to that there are, in these particular areas, that having medication can have an effect on our body to be able to absorb these. Now, when I look, go to the next slide and you have a look these are some of the nutrients that are going to contribute to the normal function of the immune system. And just look on there, the list of the ones that we've already mentioned, and it's been shown that maybe our body is struggling to get enough of those. So you can see B12, um, you can see zinc and selenium um, and folate on there. So these are really, really important for our immune system. Now, like every single part of our body, our body has its own little recipe, what it needs. And um, even though these vitamins and minerals have different roles in the body, it's the ratios that our body requires. So our immune system requires a certain amount of them. And so even if you may be getting some of that into your body, um, your body may decide which area of the body requires them. So maybe even though you are getting some selenium into your body or some copper into your body, your body is making a decision where it needs to send that. So it is really important that when we are eating foods, 
that we are considering eating nutrient dense food so we're getting enough of everything so that is one of the, the the important things so let's just understand a little bit more about our immune system the immune system that we have in our body is our body's um, defense system it's a mechanism that is in place to protect our body from invasions um, infection pathogens like bacteria and viruses and also illness so our immune system has it's very clever it has different lines of defense okay so the first one um, the first line of defense is actually from the outside of our body and it is our skin so our skin has its own layer of bacteria now bacteria often we hear about bacteria as being our microbiome and in fact on our skin we probably have around about 500 different species of bacteria and we need good bacteria because that is going to support it's our body's natural defense system so what is important that we need to keep that bacteria in balance okay now to be in balance, our body can kind of cope with like an 85% good and a 15% bad. So remember that our skin is our first line of defense. The next area that we have is actually inside our body, but it is also a skin. And this is our internal skin. And our internal skin is called our mucous membrane. And our mucous membrane actually is like the lining inside our body. So it's in your mouth, it's in your, your sinuses, um, it's into your esophagus. In fact, it goes into your lungs and it goes all the way through, right through into your urinary tract. But um, one of the important things is that, especially in the lining, in our sinuses as well, that is another area of defence. And then the one that a lot of people kind of consider is our what we call our third line is our immune response inside our body. And this is really our white blood cells. So I'm keeping it really, really simple tonight. We have our white blood cells and we have some what we call non-specific and we have specific and they will attack at different different levels so as soon as something goes into the body that the body is not sure about you have your first line that will will, will head out there so um we have two main kind of cells there you've probably heard of them your b cells and your t cells okay so that is the three levels that we have and it is important then that we support all three levels of defense for our immune health Now, when it comes to our immune health, there are things that can um, compromise our immune health. And so it's important to kind of like look at supporting our body um, to, to be the best it can be. And these are some areas that you may want to consider. The first one is to support your immune health, make sure you're getting some exercise. Now, I know at this moment in time, people are looking at self-isolating and um, social distancing, which is, a, which is a tough time, but um, depending on where you live and what you do, the exercise is really important because it's going to let go of those endorphins, which is um, to make you feel good. Another really important thing is to make sure that you can get some fresh air. OK, because fresh air is going to make you feel good. And as much as you can, then if you can do some exercise outside, even if you can only get outside to do some stretching, even if you can get a chair and sit outside and get the sunshine on your face. Why? Because vitamin D is, as you've already seen, is going to support your immune health. And the best sports, uh, form of, of vitamin D comes from sun exposure. So if you can get the sun onto your face, um, and now, you know, the great thing is the springtime is here. Um, we're starting to get some good days, mild days. So you need to make sure that you're getting out there. And the next one along on the list is sleep. So we need to try and get eight hours of sleep. 
The reason for that is because um, we're going to then get eight hours release of melatonin. And melatonin is important for your body to go through its recovery. So remember, everything that we're doing is to support our body to be healthy, to be strong. And um, as, you, um, as you probably know, that it's a good idea to try and get yourself into a way of finding an easy way to get to sleep or better way to get to sleep to start to switch off. Maybe that means listening to some nice relaxing music, having a, um, a nice warming drink, having a bath or anything like that. Find something that can help you to get your eight hours sleep. And the next one down is on your stress levels. So this is really important. In fact, I'm going to talk about stress in a little while in a little bit more detail. Um, but generally speaking, you know, it is a stressful time at the moment and it is not a good idea to overthink things because that can really affect your immune health. And of course, we all know right now that our immune health is of utmost importance. So um, getting worried, getting stressed, that's going to release um, cortisol because a stress hormone is cortisol and uh, that's not a good thing to keep releasing. So we want to kind of keep that down. So think about ways to reduce your stress levels, uh, listening to music, laughing, maybe um, um, watching programs on the TV or things that are going to make you laugh, make you smile, um, meditation, also reading this is a great time for our business to um, be reading and uh, building up our knowledge but finding a way to calm ourselves down and then fruits and vegetables fruits and vegetables nature has made it really easy for us to identify foods that are rich sources of getting all the goodies that our body needs so um, a rainbow of color that's the easiest way to identify foods that um, have these great vitamins and minerals in that we need to support our body's health uh, so for example dark red blue um, like blueberries uh, purples reds yellow oranges all of those colors like on a rainbow are really important for um, to put into your body to support your health greens rich uh, rich green colors as well are packed full of minerals nuts and seeds all of these wonderful things should be part of your your diet on a on a daily basis and you've heard about getting your five a day well um, increase that if you can to ten a day but make sure you're increasing more on the vegetable side um, because if you have more fruits, you're then obviously putting sugars into your body. But look at a way in increasing those foods right now. And then we have drinking water. Um, water has is really good for your body. So it's a nutrient in its own right. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that because Gina will. But um, one of the things that it does, it's going to, from those fruits and vegetables, all those goodies you're getting in, um, it's going to support your body with, with, with digestion. So of course, remember I said digestion stops in your mouth. So when you're eating foods and drinking water, it's going to help with the movement of the things in your mouth right down into the next part of digestion which is into your stomach and um, in your stomach you then have hydrochloric acid which will take on to the next stage of breaking down food through digestion so through the whole process water has so many different roles in the body it's creating the right environment and um, and so make sure that you are keeping your your body well topped up with water as we're going to talk about later and then the final one on here is washing your hands now there's been a big thing about washing your hands i've got some products i'm going to share with you later um and but the important thing here is that we don't want to be lots of people without realizing it uh, especially if people are working on computers they came to be like touching their face and of course whatever is on your hands the pathogens on your hands whether it's bacteria or viruses can then be passed on um, further into your body and so just to make sure that you're really keeping your hands right now squeaky clean and I'm going to give you some a few products to look into that so I think the main thing for me is that supporting our body's health is a three-legged stool um, I've just spoken about two of the legs okay the first leg is your mindset okay so to keep your mindset strong and healthy reduce your stress levels have good focus 
and then make sure you are, are, are keeping that in uh, tip top condition and then the next leg of the stool is to look at what you're doing with your um, your intake of goodness so um, looking at your diet your water and then your exercise and your sleeping pattern so you know those are the two legs and then uh, the third leg is the support that you can give if you're prepared to be doing the other two. And that is where we step in at Forever, where we can bring in nutritional support. But please remember they all, they all support each other, okay? And uh, I think that is the key thing to look at. So lots of people are asking me at this moment in time, you know, what are we gonna be taking? What, what would you suggest as a support to our immune health? Well, obviously, the first product I'm going to be talking about is actually drinking aloe vera. Now, I have lots of people saying to me about um, what would you suggest as a, as a base? This is the base. So I'm going to give you some very, very simple things to focus on. Aloe vera um, contains a whole cocktail of nutrients. And it's these nutrients that are going to support the body to be in balance. And of course, we're focusing, I could talk about lots and lots of different things, um, but we're focusing on immune health. Now, within our drinking gels, we have in the Tetra Packs, as you can see on the slide, we have added some extra vitamin C. So when you can see how vitamin C is, uh, it, it has so many roles in the body and one of them is, is on our immune system. When you are drinking 100 mils of aloe vera, especially the aloe vera gel and the berry nectar, that is going to give you 70% of your recommended intake, okay? Now, um, vitamin C is something that is, that is recommended at the moment to take. So um, one of the things that is a very, very simple thing to do is to consider how much aloe you are drinking. So why not drink more aloe vera? To me, that makes total sense. Let's just drink more aloe. Um, so think about how much you're drinking at the moment and why not set yourself a goal to drink more because that is the most simple thing to do without trying to add in loads and loads of different things. Just drink more aloe. Um, aloe vera is, as I say, it has the whole cocktail of nutrients. Now, if you are going to be drinking the, the peaches, then that does have less vitamin C in it, but it still has the same cocktail of nutrients in there. But as I said, at this moment in time, we are focusing on our immune health. So to keep it really simple then, your aloe, start to drink more. Okay, so set yourself that goal. So the next things that I would recommend, I'm going to move first of all to the Forever Active Pro B. The reason I'm going to the Forever Active Pro B is because this would be the second product that I would recommend. So I like my one, two, threes. Um, this would be the second one. And the reason for this is because 70% of our immune system resides in our gut. If you want to have a good immune system, to be in balance, our body is constantly striving to be normal, to be in balance, to be in home, uh, homeostasis, then we also need to support our gut health, okay? So 70% of our immune system resides in our gut, so it makes total sense to look after our gut health. What we have in our gut, as I've already mentioned on our skin, is our microbiome. So we have our microbiome also, which is kind of a, a whole array of bacteria, good bacteria, resides inside our body. And once again, to kind of get those ratios right, we 85% to 15. Um, that is the, the, the best thing to look at. So um, this is a very, very special one because what we want to make sure is that the bacteria are still going to be able to colonize when they actually reach the gut. So forever, to me, this is really sums up um, how wonderful our products are because we always care about what we call the bioavailability okay that it's it's not just about what you eat or what you absorb it's how your body can use what you have actually put into your body 
So um, what happens is we've got these uh, bacteria that have been put to sleep. They're like being put in a coma. And this has been done through a process called cryotechnology. And so we've got these sleeping bacteria and they've been put in this little plant cell cellulose capsule. And then inside that capsule, we we've added some fiber because these bacteria feed on fiber. And this is gonna support the sleeping bacteria on the journey, the long arduous journey that needs to take to get right down to our, our gut. Because of course, those bacteria have got to um, survive the hydrochloric acid that we have in our stomach and the digestive enzymes. And so when the plant cellulose little capsule starts to melt away and dissolve, then these bacteria will wake up and they, they've had a nice sleep. So they've got strength. And then you think, oh, they're a bit hungry, so they can eat on the, the fibre, and then that's going to support them to colonise. So that's literally how it works. Now, as you can see from the slide, there's 8 billion lactic acid, and there's diff uh, six different strains. Our bodies all have their own um, setting, you might say. It's like the own internal DNA kind of thing. Um, and so we've all been in contact with different bacteria, so it's important we have a variety of strains. Now, um, some people will say, oh, at this moment in time, should I take two of the, the Pro-B? And actually, no, because this, this is strong enough. One isn't enough. And let me explain why. It's because sometimes if you take too much, then there isn't enough room for the bacteria to colonize. Imagine if you've got 200 car parking spaces in a multi-story car park and 400 cars arrive, then there's 200 cars that can't park and they have to leave. So um, actually taking more, this has been designed so it is in perfect balance for what your body needs. So that's my one and my two. So once again, if people are asking, what do I take right now? Drink more aloe and incorporate one of those magic little capsules every day. And that's keeping it really, really simple. So the next products that I'm going to recommend are those that are kind of like adding ones. Um, and I know that some of these might be in and out of stock. So I'm just going to give you a bit of an overview to um, the ones that I've chosen and, and why I've chosen them. So the next product that I would add in would be the Forever Imi Blend. And that is, as, uh, as you can see, uh, it has those three key um, nutrients in there, vitamin C, vitamin D and zinc, which I've already mentioned, support your immune health. But then we also have these other ingredients. And I just think that actually nature is, is, is really clever and our bodies are really clever and um, how everything is, it, it works. So there's this ingredient called lactoferrin. And um, lactoferrin, it's found in your body naturally. And uh, one of the things it does, it, it will, it's a protein and it will um, bind itself to iron. As you can see the word ferrin there, which is obviously iron. But also in the body, it is found in the non-specific part of, of our immune system as well. And then we have this really exciting blend of mushrooms, which has also been added in there. So um, once again, this is something that it's designed to take a couple a day. If you want to double up, you can double up. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a great product, as the name implies, um, for supporting your immune health, especially because of the CD and zinc. Now, some of the ones that you might want to add in is the garlic the lyceum and the bee propolis so as i said i find that nature um, is fascinating and that's why we can learn such a lot from nature and botanicals um, let's talk about the forever garlic and thyme so in um in the garlic the smelly bit in garlic is called allicin. And that's why you need to make sure that when you are taking garlic, um, you are actually having the smelly bit. And this allicin, it serves as a defense. In the garlic 
in the garlic bulb itself it serves as as a defense it's quite interesting really because um, you get a reaction from the enzymes in the garlic when the plant is uh, is under threat or, or threatened uh, which is quite fascinating so that's um, that's a little bit from nature on garlic and then the next one along is probably one that a lot of people haven't even thought about. And this is an amazing, amazing product. So, oh, so with the garlic, you need to be taking um, three a day. Um, and then the, with the lyceum, also you need to be taking three a day. And uh, the lyceum is also known under the name of goji berries or also wolfberry. Um, lots of people have heard about goji berries. So um, they are known for having a really, really important polysaccharide. Um, and then the other ingredient there is licorice extract. Now it's not the licorice that you would get from, from um, a shop in sweets. Um, we're talking about licorice ex extract. And what's interesting about different plants is that they have soapy substance in, in them called saponins and aloe contains saponins as well and if you if you got aloe for example and did this it kind of goes a little bit foams or soapy in your hands and the same thing with licorice it has saponins so of course we know that it's really important that um, we keep our our tubes um, nice and clean and um, that's the great thing about licorice and the saponins in there so uh, once again it's something that you may not have considered but it's a fabulous product that we have in the range and then the forever be propolis so let me explain what propolis is once again isn't it amazing what nature comes up with so propolis is this kind of like sticky glue resin that you see oozing out of of trees Warden plants and what bees will do they will collect this propolis and they will metabolize it with their enzymes and then when they are take this into the hive they will do things like line the hive with it they stick their honeycomb together with it and if there is an invasion from outside they will cocoon that invasion with propolis in fact um propolis comes from the greek word meaning uh sorry greek word before the city meaning like once again it's the line of defense so as i say if propolis is good enough for the bees for protection then it's good enough for me so that is um that is a selection of um of products that you can take right now um with the propolis again um, a couple of those. So once again, you're kind of a bit of a mix and match there, but definitely my one and two would be the drinking gel, drink more aloe, okay? And then on top of that, take your Pro B, and then you've got a selection of other supplements that you can add in. Now I did say that um, our skin is the first line of defense, and it is really important that we are washing our hands. You've heard all over the news at the moment the importance of washing our hands. So um, what I love about the aloe hand soap is that it is um, so gentle and uh, it feels like it is uh, moisturising your hands as well. Now, of course, we know that if you're washing your hands a lot, and of course, we've all been advised to be washing our hands even more so, um, is that our hands can start to dry a little bit. So one of the challenges you have with some conventional soaps that you get out and about, they may be quite high with their pH and their alkaline pH, and they could be hitting a pH of around about 9 and 11. So that it could be quite drying to the skin. So um, ours is a, is a mild, a mild product. So definitely we have our aloe hand soap. Now, please remember that um, it is important that when we are washing our hands, that we are not just washing them for, as we've heard, singing happy birthday or for 30 seconds, but to make sure that we are washing our hands properly. So the first thing that you'd be doing with the aloe hand soap is to put water on your hands, first of all. Then you put a pump of the hand soap 
into the palm of your hands. So you're really going to lather it up. Now, the reason that you're going to be doing this is because the hand soap, as all soaps do, they contains lipids. Now, if you've got anything that you don't want on your hands, then um, you need to deal with it. Now, just as an example, if you take something like a virus, um, the coating of the virus is actually um, lipids as well. So what you want to do is kind of break it down. It's a bit like if you've got a, a paintbrush and you put a paintbrush into something like turps, the turps is going to dissolve the paint off the brush. So any, anything that's on our hands we don't want to, we need to kind of dissolve the coating. So that's important. But doing that is not enough because where can we find other pathogens? The key areas their pathogens might be on um, the fingertips, under the nails, and also the backs of the hands. So that is why it's important that we are really, really washing in between our fingers um, and our thumbs, uh, nails, underneath our nails and the backs of our hands. That is why it is important that we um, spend our time washing our hands correctly. So if you prefer, you could use the aloe and avocado soap as well, if you prefer to have a bar of soap. Now, please remember both of these products are multi-purpose. So when you're talking to your customers, their products, they don't just have to use on their hands. They can use them in the bathroom. They can use them in the shower. They can use them in the bath. Um, you, can, you can use the products um, for, <laughs> for so many different things. So they are multi-multi-purpose products. Um, then you're probably asking why they've got the balancing toner on there. That's because as we're washing our hands more, okay, once we've washed our hands, we've then got to think about making sure that we are putting all the goodness back into our hands because we don't want our hands to go dry. The last thing we want is our hands going dry and cracked because then we know pathogens will go, oh, look where I can go and settle. And that's the last thing that we want. So we need to kind of put everything back in. Within the Balancing Tone, and this is one of my favorite products, it contains hyaluronic acid, okay? We have hyaluronic acid in some of our other skincare, but this is, my, this is the, the one that I would go to. And hyaluronic acid is naturally occurring in our body. We find it in numerous places around our body, but we do find it in abundance in our skin. And what's interesting about hyaluronic acid, I want you to imagine that it's like a, a little pieces of sponge, okay? And we all know that when sponge gets wet, it's going to, um, it's going to expand, but it's going to absorb things in. And what's interesting about hyaluronic acid, it has the ability to hold a thousand times its own weight in moisture. So it's a great way to attract moisture into our skin, okay? So one of the things that I would do is that when you have washed your hands, you literally get some balancing toner and put it all over your hands, okay? Um, I use this product morning and night anyway. So what I do when I'm using, if you are using this, this product anyway for your face, think about, this is what I do. I put it onto my hands and, uh, and then I put it onto my face. I don't want the hyaluronic acid in my piece of cotton wool, I want the hyaluronic acid in my skin. So I'm putting onto my face and then what's left, I literally do that. So if you're using that product, start to make sure you're putting all over your hands as well. If you aren't using that product, I would definitely go and get it. That's one of my most favorite ones. Now, once we've done that, we need to kind of, um, kind of keep everything in, okay? So the aloe propolis cream is the one that I'd go to. I've explained what, what propolis is. And now we've, um, we've got that wonderful aloe vera. Obviously aloe vera has the same pH as, um, as our skin. So it's perfect for all skin types. So we've got the aloe and the propolis, but when you put this on, it's a nice, rich, um, thick cream and it's very nourishing and also when you put it on it's great it feels as though you've got an extra barrier on your hands so that's my one two three so we're going to we are going to be cleaning we're going to be feeding with the hyaluronic acid and we're going to be sealing with the aloe propolis cream okay so that is definitely definitely my one, two and three. And um, as I said, that these are great products for everybody. And to me, I've actually got these products for my mum for Mother's Day because, um, you know, my mum's a special lady I will, and I would rather give her these products than a box of chocolate. So maybe think about that for Mother's Day. 
Right, um, just a few extra things I want to go through before I hand over to Gina. Um, I want to talk about stress for a moment. So when we're born, we, um, we're 90% water, but just through life <laughs> that our body can actually be around about 50 to 70% water. And um, what can happen is that our body can become stressed um, if we haven't got enough water in our body. Now, water is a key nutrient. And um, what happens is that it's interesting that cells, they will become stressed if they don't have enough water. We have approximately 40 trillion cells in our body and they all need to have water. So I want you to think about your stress levels right now. Are you worrying about things? Are things getting on top of you? Is it that feeling of, um, of the unknown? And I, I, obviously I, I get all of that, but let's just see what can happen and you understand why if we're getting stressed it can also affect the cells in our body so there's there's four different levels of stress first of all um, acute so acute stress can be you know when our fight or flight kicks in the adrenaline goes off and um, this is a very bit intense it's short-lived and we start to um, things happen within our body so your heart may start to race um, your breathing can get faster or it can go shallow um, <laughs> so your breathing is changing you might feel that you want to go to the toilet um, either way you might stop to get hot and sweaty and perspire. So all of those things can lead to water loss. Okay, I just want you to think about those breathing changes, um, going to the toilet, perspiration, you can all lose water. The other thing is your body is, is um, stressed out, acute stress, that the water will move to the air as it needs to. So one of the things you often will find is you get a dry mouth. So um, this is acute stress now the chronic stress is the day-to-day -day stress that we have it's that ongoing stress now it's the mild thing that is kind of a mild form of the above but you're still going to have the effects of losing water but rather over short periods of time it's because your these day-to-day -day stresses are going on you're still going to be losing the water um, in in kind of a a more of a, a your a longer a longer period of time so small amounts over a longer period of time if that makes sense rather than more in a shorter period of time and then we have external stress so those are things that we don't have any control over at all but we take it all on board um, so the external factors worrying about what's going on in the outside world a lot of people are doing that right now it could be work it could be um, other people's reactions to what they're doing or overthinking things um, finances this is external external um, threat so a uh, stress and as I say a lot of that is out of your control because it's happening in the outside world and then we have the internal stress so internal stress can be down to a lot of things I've already mentioned that can be down to taking too many stimulants um, refined sugar um, alcohol smoking bad nutrition in your diet and um, it could also be a sluggish system that you've got so maybe there's more toxins hanging around in your body these are all internal and the other thing that's a big thing for stress is your inner thoughts and it's the language that we speak to ourselves so um, these are in, in th and also not drinking enough water which I'm going to um, uh, just park that for now but you know when we think about all these things that we know that the stress that we are around can have an effect on what is happening inside our body not just from a nutritional point of view but also from a water content so um, just think about that for a moment your stress levels so water um, we can survive for days even weeks um, without food even though we don't think we can. <laughs> um, 
but you need water daily. And um, it's the first thing that you should go, go to is, is drinking water before you go and eat food. So some of the things that water is needed for within our body, it contributes to normal physical and cognitive function. So your cognitive functions is your memory, your reasoning, and your knowledge and also to help to regulate the body's temperature so generally speaking um, you would need to be drinking at least two liters of water every day now we have um, water in in foods i'm going to leave that because jean is going to cover that um, but one of the things that we um, we sometimes don't realize is that carbohydrates do hold on to a lot of water. Um, carbohydrates come in different forms from your bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, and also your fruits and vegetables. So you do have hidden water in foods. And sometimes there's a bit of a, a bit of a guideline. So um, the nutrients that we, we're putting in our body from our food, they need to be in the right environment so they can all work together. And the right environment is in, in water. So as an example, if you are having two and a half thousand calories a day, you need to have two and a half liters of water. And of course, the great news is, why would you want to drink more, more aloe right now as well, is because the, the aloe um, content um, has this 98 to 99% of aloe is actually water, okay? Um, and then all those wonderful nutrients that we have is in that other percentage, but they all work together. They work synergistically together. Uh, so that is another reason why you need to be topping up your, um, your aloe right now. Okay, so um, we can get water in, in lots of different ways. Just one thing I want to, to say here is that um, if you are getting having your fruit juices and your smoothies, we, we kind of say about six to eight glasses of fluid every day. Um, but just kind of make sure that you are not overdoing with your fruit juices because that will actually have uh, quite a bit of sugar. So this is really important to understand that water is a key nutrient and it is often overlooked. So um, what I'm going to do now, I am going to pass over to Gina, if I can just, oh, here she is. I'm just going to, Hello. Um, <laughs> right, okay. I'll be quiet, I, I, the, I don't know why, but I, it's not coming up, I can. That's perfect. You can hear me okay anyway. Can yeah, you? yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just be quiet. Okay, perfect. No problem. Um, so thank you so much, Louise. That was absolutely amazing. As always, I could listen to you all night long. <laughs> um, so my name is Gina Ryan. I started my business with Forever five years ago. At the time when I started, I wasn't in a very good place. Um, I suppose that slide that Louise showed with all the medication brought back a lot of memories. Um, I suppose I had a lot of different joint complaints and I suppose I was at a stage then of really exploring more of a holistic approach of getting myself well. I suppose that's what I loved about Forever, that's what I loved about Louise's approach is that they look at health in an overall picture. I changed my lifestyle totally, I really started looking at the physical exercise that I was doing, looked at working on my mindset, looked at changing my nutrition and looked at taking some natural nutritional supplements to support me. So massive, massive change. Um, I went on then to study sports and exercise nutrition. I have a real, real passion of helping people get nutrition right for them to achieve their goals. Um, my sister had also lost 11 stone in weight. That's another reason why I'm naturally interested in nutrition, I suppose. Um, but I suppose I would like to say that from studying nutrition, most of what I know and most of what I use that's practical information has come from Louise's trainings, definitely. So, you know, take that on board whenever you see Louise's trainings coming up, make sure you are there. Um, you hear of people, I think, following their favorite band. I think I followed Louise Riley around Ireland like that whenever she's here doing a training. Um, so there's always, always brilliant, brilliant um, content there. So um, oh, you can see here on the screen, we're going to talk about water. We're going to talk about hydration. Um, globally at the minute, it is International Nutrition and Hydration Week this week. Um, a little bit fitting, I suppose, of what's going on, that we all really, really to start looking at our nutrition, looking at our hydration, looking at how we can best support our immune system. Um, water, for me, is so, so important. It is an essential nutrient. And I don't think people 
are mindful of water in that way. I don't think they stop and actually really appreciate the power of what water can have in your body. Louise already mentioned the human body as an adult is mostly between 50 and 70% made up of water. So an average of 60% of your body is water. Every single cell in your body, those 40 trillion cells plus that we have in our body, your tissues, your organs, they're looking for water. They're looking for your body to be hydrated properly, to be of optimum performance. Your brain, we talked about your cognitive function, it's coming back to how hydrated your body is. Your heart, your blood, so many things are coming back to, are you actually feeding your body enough water? It's gonna regulate your body temperature, which is so, so important. It's gonna to help to remove any toxin buildup. So it's gonna help that your organs are working properly, your liver, your kidney, everything can work properly when your body is hydrated properly. It keeps your joints lubricated. So for even from a performance in sports, hydration is so, so important. Overall health, again, going back to all your tissues, your muscles, your cells, your mind health, everything is coming back to, are you well hydrated? And um, we'll skip to the next slide there, Louise, please. Can see the cursor is moving, there we go. So how much water should we have? Um, you'll often hear people kind of say, oh, I'm brilliant, I drink six liters of water a day. You can have too much water because you'll start to flush the sodium out of your body. It's about looking and seeing how much is right for you. I think I robbed this saying from one of Louise's um, trainings. Picture your body as a sink without the plug. So it's constantly been flushed through your body, flushing out the toxin buildup, helping your organs work correctly, but it constantly needs to be topped back up again. So just be mindful about it. Are you actually consuming enough? Are you constantly topping up that sink because the plug is out? Two liters a day, as Louise already mentioned, is the average guide. So in around the eight ounce glasses, um, eight, eight ounce glasses is the guide, but it does need to be looked at as a person, as an individual. So for example, Louisa Slide explained it as well. If there was a man that needed to consume 2,500 calories a day, he would need two and a half liters of water a day. If there was somebody's body that needed to consume 4,000 calories a day, they would need four liters of water. So it does have to be looked at on an individual, on an individual level also. We'll move on there, Louise. Brilliant. So it's important that we look at hydration. And when we say hydration, we don't just mean water. OK, we look at fluid. Fluid is what's going to hydrate your body. So a certain amount of your coffees can count. You'd be glad to hear. A safe limit will be in around the 400. So it's about looking at what else you can use to hydrate your body, looking at your herbal teas and looking at making some positive changes. So I suppose a lot of people would say to me, I could never see myself actually drinking two or two and a half liters of water a day. So if that's you, that's probably not going to be the case tomorrow. You're not going to be drinking two, two and a half liters tomorrow. So look at making changes and look at what else you can do to support your body through making those changes. So I suppose I help people a lot with weight management and I might have somebody coming to me that's drinking nothing but fizzy drinks. If I tell them stop drinking your two liters of Coca-Cola a day and now drink two liters of water a day, it's probably not going to happen. So we need to look at what positive changes that we can make. So first of all, adding different fruits to it. I love particularly lemons and limes, or I love cucumbers in it. Um, if that's still a bit too far out there for you, let's bring it back another bit. Could you change maybe to fizzy water? Could you put maybe a cordial in it to flavor it? It's just about making positive changes. And bit by bit, you will get to that stage of drinking the two to two and a half liters. So it's not overnight perfection. It's about looking at the most important thing is keep your body hydrated mainly from water, but you can count your herbal teas, a certain amount of your teas, your coffees, um, a certain amount of things that way as well. But look at making positive changes. Set yourself a little bit of a target and work towards it. If we can move again there, Louise. So food, as Louise mentioned already, a lot of foods are very, very high in water. And I suppose you can see it obviously in some foods, the likes of cucumber and water and melon, they're very watery to eat. But so what might surprise people is the likes of an avocado. Avocado is one of my favorite foods, um, but that surprises some people. So even courgettes, strawberries, they're so high in water. 
And Louise mentioned already the importance of eating the rainbow, the importance of eating more vegetables if you can, upping it to 10 a day now, not even just looking at the five a day. So just knowing that that's going to help you in a number of different ways. It's obviously going to help increase the amount of vitamins and minerals, the different nutrients that you're getting. But it's also going to help inc increase your fluid intake as well. So making a big conscious effort to increase your vegetables will really go a long way to increase your body of being properly hydrated as well. So making that conscious effort that you're not just settling for the one or two different vegetables, you're going for variety, you're going for eating the rainbow to making sure that you're getting enough nutrients in, but then that you're going to also increase your water intake by eating those foods as well. Again there, Louise. Okay, so the products that we do in Forever to help support your hydration. So I suppose I'm really, really passionate, as is Louise, that it has to be an overall picture. You have to start with what you're feeding your body. So what you're actually consuming as in drinks or foods, you have to work on your mindset. It's an overall picture of wellness. And then we thankfully have some amazing products to help and support you on that journey. So looking at our aloe vera gel, first of all, Louise done a brilliant presentation on the power of aloe vera, why it's important. She also mentioned how aloe vera is 98 to 99% water. And it's a whole cocktail of nutrients. And it is that synergistically effect of all those 75 different nutrients that makes aloe so, so powerful. So I suppose I've always drank for the last five years at least 150 mils of aloe every day. I'm now after upping it, as Louise said, it's the first thing to do is up your aloe. So I'm drinking one of these baby aloes every day, which is up to 330 mils. So it's really, really important to increase the aloe for all those vitamins and minerals you're going to get in that perfect balance, but you're really increasing your water intake as well. So looking at what aloe is right for you and definitely increasing that will be definite starting point. Our RG Plus, that's one of my best selling products and probably my second best selling product after our aloe vera gels. That's an amazing product. So I suppose this is about looking at what you're actually drinking with extra benefits so extra nutritional benefits in what you're drinking so it's not a case of just you're drinking for the sake of drinking it's about being more mindful about it so the likes of drinking our rg plus is going to give you your l-arginine which is fantastic for your cardiovascular health but it's also going to give you so many vitamins as well it's very high in vitamin c Louise mentioned, very important for the immune system. It's an amazing, amazing supplement. Very high in vitamin D as well, which we know is very important for the immune system. But again, I think it just gets you more mindful that what you're drinking is having an impact in your body. You're not just drinking for the sake of drinking it. You're drinking it because it is feeding your body. It's fueling your mind. It's helping with those nutritional benefits. We have our aloe blossom tea, which I'd see as being a lovely calming tea. And I suppose with stress everyone's going through at the minute, it's very, very important to make sure we're keeping our bodies as stress-free as we possibly can. It's a lovely calming tea. I often have it before bed, um, which is when most of our heads will start to go in overdrive and stress levels go through the roof, for me anyway. And uh, we have our Forever Light Ultra Shake, which is going to give you in one scoop 50% of your recommended daily intake of all your vitamins and minerals. So again, you're drinking, but with extra nutritional benefits. We have our super greens, particularly high in vitamin C, vitamin E and magnesium. A lot of people are deficient in magnesium. So again, those extra benefits. You have the likes of our fab is going to give you more electrolytes, the likes of the palmistine power, full of so many different fruits. So again, I would just say when you're drinking, be as mindful as you sometimes are when you're eating as I hope you're going to get more of when you're eating. So I suppose a lot of people, they would stop and think twice about maybe having a cake if they're out in a cafe, but they might not stop and think so hard into having their mocha or their hot chocolate or something like that. So what I would just say to you is just look at what you're drinking in the same way as what you're eating. And especially if you're looking at weight management, my sister that I mentioned at the start that lost 11 stone in weight a few years ago, she looks at drinks, certain drinks as being liquid donuts. You know, so do just be mindful about what you're drinking as much as you are about what you're eating as well. Move on there, Louise, please. Great, so some tips. So it's about, as I said, making improvements. So it's not gonna be all perfect tomorrow, but it's about looking at getting you there. So look at drinking a glass of water as soon as you wake up. Most people's bodies will be fairly dehydrated after hopefully an eight hour sleep. Um, so start to drink a glass of water before every meal is a very, very good habit. Water is so, so important for, for digestion as well. And we know a healthy gut, a healthy digestive system is so, so important for your immune system. So make that a good habit. Drink a glass of water as you're taking up the meal or just before you eat. 
set some reminders on your phone or there is some apps now as well to actually help you manage are you drinking enough water because until it becomes a habit you will need something to really keep you on track okay um so look at having a water bottle at hand look at always having a glass of water beside you whatever you're doing that is the best best way i find of actually getting through enough water is constantly make sure it's on hand so that you're not having to stop and think okay i'm going to go and get a glass of water just always have one with you so adding different fruits as i mentioned um so maybe lemons and limes are going to help to keep the body even more alkaline um, and add in different things that suit you. So whether it's strawberries, whether it's orange slices, whether I said it's cordial and fizzy water, whatever it needs to be for now to start making some of those positive changes. And remembering it's so, so important to keep all those toxins actually moving from your body. And um, if you're hungry, often you're actually thirsty. So starting off that if you feel a little bit peckish, mm, maybe I need a bit of a snack, just start having a glass of water first. And if you're still hungry, then obviously you're hungry, but start and see maybe I could actually be thirsty first and um, we can move again Louise okay so some of the main benefits in keeping your body well hydrated weight management I think is one that a lot of people would like to hear that's a benefit and um, how is it going to be of benefit because I suppose it's going to help clear that toxin build up it's going to help your organs work how they need to work your body is going to be doing what it needs to do your cells your organs everything is working how it needs to work so your metabolism is probably going to be improved you're going to look at reducing your water retention so a lot of people say but how come drinking more water won't make you retain more water because purely by drinking the optimal amount of water that your body is looking for it doesn't have a need to hang on to it anymore so everything again is getting back into balance your body is becoming into the real state where it needs to be it's in homeostasis it's actually working how it needs to work so you're not going to be retaining what you should be retaining in water retention and toxic buildup in the same way it's also going to help to reduce your appetite if it's actually out of balance so it's going to help keep your body again where it needs to be it's going to have a very very positive impact on your muscles and on your joint health because it's very important to lubricate your joints in turn that's going to have a very very positive impact if you're performing in sports or fitness as well your skin's appearance so think about your skin. I think we all want the better, as better skin as we can possibly get. So I suppose even picture a plump, juicy grape that's well hydrated. Your skin can be well hydrated and be plump. Or do you want it to be shriveled up and dehydrated like a prune? So that is the impact hydration can have on your skin. Headaches. A lot of people that suffer headaches are actually purely dehydrated. It can help your energy levels. It can help your mood. You have a nerve called the vagus nerve directly connecting your gut to your brain. So again, if you're doing everything you can to keep your gut in balance, get digestive work where it needs to be, you'll see a very positive impact on your mood. Your metabolism, as I mentioned, is going to help sleep. So many different benefits to keeping your body hydrated. And you'll actually find when you get in the habit of doing it, you'll actually find that you recognize when your body is dehydrated. At the minute, you might be kind of thinking, yeah, I don't drink too much, but I don't think I'm dehydrated. When you get to a stage of keeping your body well hydrated, you will not be able to go the day without at least that two liters of fluid to keep your body hydrated. So you'll become to recognize when your body is out of balance and when your body actually needs a bit more support. So the next slide, please, Louise, is just about building that habit. So it's about just taking the chance now. I suppose we're all at home, so there's no excuse of um, the office doesn't let me have enough water by the desk or whatever the case is. A lot of people are at home now. So I suppose step up and take a little bit of responsibility now for what we can do to look at our own nutrition and our own hydration to really, really look at, okay, I can actually exercise even if I'm at home. I can put on YouTube videos. I can work on my mindset. I can meditate. I can focus on what I'm grateful for. I can really look at, am I eating the rainbow? Am I making a conscious effort to feed my body, fuel my body, feed my mind? Am I making a conscious effort to really, really hydrate my body? Am I focusing on drinking enough water? So all I say is just focus today, make a little bit of a start and just focus on making improvements. It's not going to be perfect overnight. So just look at building it as a habit. And I tell you, you will not be able to go a day without your two to two and a half years of water when you come to recognize what being hydrated feels like. So I hope you got some little bit of value from that. Um, Louise is now going to join me back and we're going to open up to some questions that have come in. I can see a lot of questions coming in. So Louise will have a little skim through and see what we can answer for people. Thanks, Louise. Well, I'd love to if it would open up, but it won't open. So, 
<laughs> so, oh wait, no, it's open. I, it's opening for me here, so I'll have it. Oh, like, you, oh you've got it opening your end. Okay. Yeah. So you can oh, yeah, do the then. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know why that happened. So let me just have a quick skim through and see what we can answer. Uh, I think you've answered. There's ones coming in. What supplements can we best um, recommend to support people's health right now? Louise definitely covered that very well. Uh, what's the youngest age you can start taking the kids' vitamins? It says age three on the top. Um, what else have we got? Um, tell us about the problems, tablets. You covered that, Louise. Uh, is the MPD a sanitizer? I don't think we could call it a sanitizer, could we, Louise? No, no. I mean, it's just a multi-purpose detergent, so we can't make yeah. any claims. I mean, obviously, it's a great product um, to use yeah. around your home right now, but we can't be making any any um, claims about that. Mm. Is there any supplements, Louise, that you would say should not be taken together at the same time? Um, the, the general rule, really, is is taking something that is high in fibre um, with um, some some good um, good fats, good oils. So um, I wouldn't take the Arctic Sea. Yeah, I wouldn't take the Arctic Sea and the, mm -hmm. the Lean or the Forever Fibre at the same time. It's just because fibre will kind of grasp extra fats and eliminate Perfect. them from the body. And how much aloe would you recommend for a seven-year-old, please? Okay, so my whole thing about drinking aloe is that generally speaking, people will say, at what age can I start drinking aloe? Well, as a parent, it's your decision when you want to start putting your child onto solids, for example. So there isn't, um, there isn't a hard and fast rule how much anybody should drink. It's all down to your preference. So first of all, um, you can, when you make a decision as a parent that you want to start giving your child aloe, generally speaking, it might be from um, when they start, you make a decision you want to put your child onto solids and you start to give them a little bit of apple puree on, on a spoon, you might want to think, oh, I could give my child a little bit of aloe on a teaspoon. But then how much to drink when it's exactly the same thing? How much apple puree would you give your child as much as it wants? So I think, let's be honest, the amount that you give a child is probably down to you thinking how much it's going to be costing. <laughs> So I want you to understand it's 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 absolutely fine for your seven year old to drink the same amount as you if you want to do that. So just let your child enjoy aloe. Great answer. And my little boy is only seven months old and he drinks it out of his little cup every morning. He loves it. <laughs> um, can children take our pro B and from what age? Okay, yes, um, children can take probiotics. Remember that our products are, are basically designed for adults, but um, um, the, with a probiotic, you know, some children are given probiotics when they're in hospital because they have not had the privilege of being able to have their immune system starting to be um, built up because when, if they're, they're born through cesarean section, um, if they are in an incubator and they haven't had contact with their mum, the immune system is going to start to kick in when they have contact with their mum. So um, they have to have probiotics at a young age to build their microbiome. So I want you to think logically when your child can swallow um, a, a tablet, um, that would be the time really and uh, obviously supervised. Okay. Perfect. Thanks a million. Um, someone asked, is it still effective if I take the aloe at night, not on an empty stomach? I'd say yes. Is that what we're right in saying? Yes, it's still effective. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, mushroom, Louise, why would that be um, important for the immune system? The why is it in mushrooms. The mm. um, it in the it's something I can't really answer because I'll be talking... Uh, in a non-compliant way, mm -hmm. but I would suggest you go do some research on, um, look out on the back of the Immu Blend and look at the mushrooms in there. I'm just going to do a bit of re your own research on why people would enjoy um, things like um, Foti mushrooms from Chinese medicine. Perfect. Um, so I'm asking, did I say one scoop um, contains 50% of the recommended daily intake of your vitamins and minerals? Yes, it does. Um, let's see what else we've been asked. Um, 
is our hand soap antibacterial? I would say no. Is that right, Louise? Yeah, and also um, I've had this question asked me as well. And, you know, at this moment in time, people are looking more at uh, to look at viruses. So um, you don't need to be looking at products that are antibacterial. And um, really, um, soap is soap. It's the lipids in the soap that you need to dissolve the, um, or have an effect on the, the coating of things like viruses. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, if I haven't answered your question, it's probably because it has a medical um, terminology or medical question as part of it, which we can't answer. We're not doctors, we're not medically trained. So if I haven't answered your question, that's probably the reason. Um, what else are we here? What's the difference between the aloe activator and the aloe toner? Well, they're totally different products, really. Uh, I'd, um, yeah, basically the aloe activator, it doesn't have hyaluronic acid in it. It's the hyaluronic acid you're looking for at this moment in time. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything we can answer, answered Louise. Thank you so much. Very, very knowledgeable as always and very enjoyable. Thank you so much. And thank you very much, Gina, as well. And I believe that we're doing a duo next week as well. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So um, I know there's still some questions that are there. If we have the ability to answer those questions, everybody out there, and because looking on here, there is uh, nearly 80 questions. So obviously I know a lot of you want to go and get yourself a cup or something else now, put your feet up and relax. So we will do our best to answer those other questions if we can. Um, but um, I hope that um, our section has helped you and uh, please, Go and look after yourself. Go, go and talk to your friends and family about our wonderful products and especially to support the most important thing at this moment and that is your immune health. So thank you very much for Jean, Gina for um, being here this evening and, um, and good evening everybody and um, speak to you all again soon. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks Bye. so much, Louise. Thanks everyone. Bye.